Hello, Assalamu alaikum. So, welcome back again. We have already discussed about the discoverability issue and the design principles. Now, let us move towards the simplicity. I have already explained you that we do not have to throw each and everything at the user. So, there often exists a tension between discoverability and simplicity that how much information we need to keep for things to get discoverable and how it can be made sophisticated so that uh, it should not be a complex drawing of the stuff in front of you where you have to kind of uh, think a lot for selecting a particular option so uh, on the one hand discoverability means you need to be able to find things but how can you find them if they are not accessible or visible in our previous example if the things are so much complicated or arranged in so much complexity then it will be very difficult for them to be accessible or visible so simplicity has been mentioned by nielsen's constantine and lockwood and the universal design principles in ron and may's principles simplicity appeals to users of a variety of different levels of expertise ages disabilities and so on so now in some ways these principles are about designing interfaces but they cover other elements as well now in this case <clears throat> see you are showing everything you have available so in this case it is very difficult to be accessible it is very difficult to be uh, for an option to be visible so we need to make it quite simple so this is a kind of a notation or a kind of a notion for simplicity so jacob nielsen says that dialogues should not contain information which is irrelevant or rarely needed every extra unit of information competes with the relevant units of information and diminishes their relative visibility so you need to keep the information which is relevant because if you will not keep the relevant information and you will show every other information then the importance of the relevant information will get diminished <clears throat> now uh, the simplicity principle by larry constantine and lucy lockwood states that the design should make simple common tasks easy communicating clearly and simply in the user's own language and providing good shortcuts now here the constantine and lockwood focuses on the way the shortcuts are used so in this case you are catering both to novice users and to the experts user expert users now expert users know how to use the shortcuts like control c control v control x but novice users don't so you need to make the options discoverable for the novice users but at the same time you have to keep um, them not so visible uh, because this is an irrelevant information for the expert user so you have to uh, keep a balance a kind of a balance <coughs> And then uh, Ronald may say simple and intuitive use. Use of the design is easy to understand regardless of the user's experience, knowledge, language skills or current concentration level. So see now in ways these principles are about designing interfaces but they cover other elements as well. For instance this infamous blue screen of death in Windows. Now this is a nice application of nielsen's heuristics that the user should only be given as much information as they need now based on this um jacob nielsen definition if you will see on the left see the left there is a lot of information which the users does not need to know like the code and the current application uh, press any key to terminate the current application then press this and you will lose any unsaved information and if we will see the font the font is not so you know, user friendly the color is not so user friendly now look at the right side the color is mild blue so it's good for um, the information to be visualized and everything is written in the plain language like your pc ran into a problem needs to restart we are just collecting some error for and then we'll restart for you so it's uh, it's the information in the plain language it's the information which users can understand 
now you have an extra information right here so basically the information is de-emphasized so if someone is interested they can read it otherwise they get that can be ignored so that's a perfect uh, kind of uh, application which Nielsen's heuristic states that the user should only be given as much information as they need now look at this Mossman council turns to New York for a simpler signage solution now in this case if you will see to the left side here if someone is not familiar with English language it will be a problem to understand each of those things and this takes a kind of a, a lot of cognitive load to understand that what is the parking time when the parking is available when the parking is not available now similarly look at the right side it provides you the exact same information but it is quite easy to understand that on Monday to Friday at 7 a.m. the parking is available from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. the parking is not available and then from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. the parking is available similarly on Saturday the parking is available from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and from uh, this particular session the parking is not available again and then the parking is available for all the time so it's easy to understand and it can be understood by um, the ones which do not know the English language now this is particularly what the Ronald Mace says that simple and intuitive use use of the design is easy to understand regardless of the user's experience knowledge language skills or current concentration level so you need to design the application for a general audience rather than the specific ones now uh, when we have dealt with a simplicity let's talk about something about affordances now affordances are something which we have a habit of doing and we understand it by just seeing it we have experience of uh, affordances from our childhood or from our gatherings or from our kind of uh, upbringing so we know certain things that how they can be used and to leverage that particular concept into the interfaces is a kind of affordance so the design of the thing affords or hence at the way it's supposed to be used it's similar to the familiarity principle by Dick Sattel which is stated in human computer interaction by Dick's we'll talk about this book later on so uh, quite common in the physical world as the physical design of the objects is connected to the physical function they, they serve for instance buttons are meant to be pressed handles are meant to be pulled knobs are meant to be turned something like this so this is a sign of the affordances and by looking at it we know that we have to push it or we have to drag it uh, like downwards to make it open so this is a kind of obvious thing that we need to do it's like if we look at it we understand that what we need to do so an affordance is a relationship between the properties of an object and the capabilities of the agent that determine just how the object could be possibly used and this is uh, being said by Don Norman so in other words an object with an affordance basically tells the user by its very design how it's meant to be used Dorman also says that the presence of an affordance is jointly determined by the qualities of the object and the abilities of the agent that is interacting so in other words what Dorman, uh, Don Norman wants to say is that an affordance for one person isn't an affordance for everyone it's like if you didn't grow up around door handles then maybe that door handle doesn't have an affordance for you the way it would be for someone who grew up around that so our affordances are designed by who the user is and what they already know and it depends on the kind of a social norms or it depends on the cultural differences which a person have been um, uh, grown into so it's basically uh, the thing is that what you already know or what you have the knowledge of you can actually uh, leverage that knowledge to like perform a certain action 
in the interface and that should not be imposed on you that should be obvious to you by looking at it. so in this case see uh, we have if, if uh, we have used the computer enough times we know that what is this cut copy and paste and these are uh, we, we understand it by just looking at it this, th therefore there is no a kind of a, a, a caption to it similarly if we read a book if we read a book we know that for turning the page we have to like swipe like this or if we want to go back we have to swipe like this so this is the affordance which have been used in the tablets so if you swipe to the right there will be next slide if you swipe to the left there will be the previous slide or if you will swipe to the right there will be the next image and if you will swipe to the left there will be previous image so these affordances are actually adapted from the things we do in our everyday lives and we understand those affordances quite clearly that's why these um, stuff are called affordances now in this case these this is the color is the option that this is the color and we can choose any of the color and this particular uh, white stuff is the slider so we know that we have to slide it we cannot just drag it or we cannot just like see it and it moves all together so we know by our affordances that it needs to be slide we look at it and we know what we have to do so that's what the affordance is that's what the affordance uh, is meant up, uh, is all about that you see things and you understand that how it can be used now in this case uh, these are the pages menu so you need to uh, you understand basically that okay there is a pages menu you need to click it once you click it, once you click it the menu will appear so in this case see the discoverability is there that if you want to use the menu if you want to see the menu you can see the menu so there is the option is discoverable the simplicity is that every menu is not scattered out so if you want to use the menu you can just click it and there will be the options so it is discoverable it is a kind of a simple and then we know by looking at it that we have to press it so that's what the affordance is that you need to um, understand the user that what uh, what is their experience about the affordances and you have to leverage that particular experience to adapt it in your interface so that they do not need to think that how it can be used they already know it they, uh, their intuition is there to guide them that this thing works in the similar way as they are supposed to do now of course there is the use of signifiers and we will talk about the use of signifiers in the next slide where uh, there is a difference between the affordance and the way the person is guide guided to use that particular affordance so like let's look at that so sometimes perceived affordance is not compliant with the actual affordance uh, a signifier is anything that helps the perceived affordance match the actual affordance so similar uh, in this case let's look at this example now if you look at this door the above door as i have been um, exposed to the doors i am not sure that either i have to push it or i have to pull it down by by looking at it it's a kind of a human um, uh, it's a kind of a my upbringing as i would say that if something is like this i would try to push it or similarly with this door knobs I would try to push it. I would try to push the door. And uh, that's my uh, that's my first intuition. That's my first um, uh, kind of a line of act. That what I want to do. Now, 
affordance is that I should look at it and I should understand what to do. Now in this case, I look at it, I know that I have to push it. But the perceived affordance is something like um, you are thinking that the people will perceive the affordance in such a way that you have thought about it, but it's not. It's not the actual affordance. So that's what the difference is between the perceived affordance and the affordance. It's like you have perceived the affordance of the user to be like this, but it's not actually there. The affordance is not actually the one which you have perceived. So in that case, we need to use the signifier. So let's say if I have would know that which door needs to be pushed or which door needs to be latched, I can just color it with black. So maybe now what we are doing is we are using the signifiers to make align the perceived affordance and the actual affordance. Similarly for this door, what we can do is we can write it or we can just write push or pull. So if you want to pull then just write it down pull and what the people will do is they will know that we have to grab the handle and we have to pull it so the use of signifiers actually align the perceived affordances and actual affordances now sometimes what the people do is they uh, interchangeably use these vocabularies like affordances and signifiers which to me is not a bad thing it's okay if they use it for a kind of a... you see that when you are in a casual conversation it's okay to use these things interchangeably but when you are uh, like uh, delivering a lecture a technical lecture or when you are presenting something or when you are uh, writing a research paper or a technical paper then you need to have uh, you need to know the clear difference between the affordance and signifiers and that is the point where you cannot use them interchangeably that is the point that you have to know the difference between a signifier and the affordance but in a casual converse conversation it's okay to use signifier affordance as a interchangeable word there is no problem in that the thing is that uh, you need to make the interface usable for the user and if the user you if the user's affordances does not match with your perceived affordances you need to add the signifiers to it to let them know that that's how these affordances work that's how i have perceived that afford affordance and that's how you have to adopt it I hope, I hope I am clear about these affordance and perceived affordance thing. Now let's move towards another uh, heuristic which is mapping. So mapping is something that is mapped from the interface to the world. So this is a kind of a notion or a representation of mapping. So mapping is a technical term meaning the relationship between the elements of two set of things as suggested by Don Norman. And Jacob Nielsen says that the system should speak the user's language with words, phrases and concepts familiar to the user rather than system oriented terms. Follow real world conventions making information appear in a natural and logical order. So. Normal and Nielsen both talk about the mapping between interfaces and their effects in the world. That how these uh, mappings can affect your surroundings. Don Norman in this case uh, says that our two sets are the interface. Uh, the, Don Norman refers to these two sets as uh, the interface and the world. So a great example uh, which Nielsen said is the cut copy and paste which is actually referred to the cut copy and paste uh, because what we do is we cut things we copy it we paste it in real world and we call them the same things 
in the digital world in the interfaces so surely there could have been more technical terms like duplicate instead of copy but using cut copy and paste forms a natural mapping between our own vocabulary and what happens in the system so Nielsen heuristic describes the general goal while Norman describes one way to achieve it. Strong mappings help make information appear in natural and logical order. So mapping is to create the interfaces where the design makes it clear what the effect will be when using them. Not just creating interfaces where it's clear how you are supposed to use them. Now let's say uh this is a kind of a display so if you have visited a data center there are actually a lot of displays uh, that can be uh, like deployed now in this case you may see that the displays are arranged in the similar way as they are arranged in the real world this actually maps the interface and the real world together so it's like you know that which monitor or which display device is assigned to two or which display device is assigned to three so it's quite visible and it's quite mapped out uh, that how we use things in the real world and how they are they have been represented in the interface so it's easy to understand right it's easy to map out so you have to design an interface which works like this which is easy to map out Similarly, for this color, we know that uh, this is a slider, which is the affordance, and we have to like slide it like this and this and this. But what does mapping does? The mapping is that if we slide from left to right, the shades change from white to black, so it gets darker when you move towards the right. That's the mapping. That's the mapping that is mapped onto the real world from the interface that if we move towards black it gets darker if we move towards white it gets brighter that's the mapping so that's why i said that the mapping is to create the interfaces where the design makes it clear what the effect will be when using them not just creating interfaces where it's clear how you are supposed to use them Now let's see a design challenge of mapping and switches. Now affordance is that I know that these switches have to be moved upwards or downwards to open it and close it. That's affordance. That how, that's how we are actually brought up. We know that how to use these buttons. But the mapping is that what they actually do into the real world. So if they switch off the bulb or if they switch off the light then which room's light has been switched off so that's the mapping and there is no indication to it so uh, of course uh, it's not a good kind of mapping but we will talk about this switch later now similar to this if you will look at it you will know that these buttons that which stove is actually turned on if you move the left one or if you move the right one so this is actually quite uh, uh, this is actually mapped out quite good that we know that which stove is going to get turned on if we move this particular um, dial okay so this is a particular mapping for the affordance we know that we have to move it anti-clockwise or we have to move it clockwise or basically we have to like turn it in the circular direction that's the affordance but the mapping is that what it will do in the real world i hope i am clear here so um how do you redesign these light switches to create not only affordances but also mappings you have to think about it if relevant most left one turns on the breakfast room light middle one turns on the counter light and the right one turns on the kitchen light so basically um, the uh, the mapping is 
natural hair but if someone who is like if i say uh, in my example if i see the switches on my board in my room they does they do not provide any mapping that which kind of light it's not organized in a way that it works from left to right like the room on the left has this button the room on the light have this button it should have been it should have been in this convention but it's not but of course in this case uh, the mapping is that this turns on the leftmost room light this turns on the middle room light and this uh, button turns on the most right rooms right so the convention is mapped out in the real world but there is no signifier to it so if we can add a signifier we can use it quite it's like we can make it quite understandable so perceptibility perceptibility is another uh, kind of uh, design heuristic which refers to the user's ability to perceive the state of the system so how we can perceive the state of the system by looking at it so nielsen says that the system should always keep users informed about what is going on through appropriate feedback within the reasonable time and Ronald May says the design communicates necessary information effectively to the user regardless of ambient conditions or the user's sensory abilities. And uh, the Don Norman says that feedback must be immediate, feedback must also be informative. Poor feedback can be worse than no feedback at all because it is distracting, uninformative, and in many cases irritating and anxiety provoking. Now, here Nielsen's um, it's like uh, the definition of Nielsen says that the system that allows the user to perceive what's going on inside the system that's better right that you uh, perceive it like this it's perceived that okay this should be for the leftmost room this should be for the middle room this should be for the life rightmost room so we perceive it and uh, the system allows us to perceive what's going on inside similarly the ronald mays uh, in this definition that communicates necessary information effectively to to the user we may say in other words that everyone using the interface should be able to perceive the current state now in this stove we know that what the current state is we know that it's off and if it is turned on we know that what's the current state is what it will do so we know that how the system works uh, we perceive how the system works in this case but let's uh, take another example we know that we ha do not have these kind of fans but in uh, uk in conventional homes you will find these kind of fans so it's like if the button is turned on let's perceive that if the button is turned on it means that the electricity to this particular fan is flowing but the thing is there are two chains and there is no indication that which chain is for what purpose now if I pull the chain and it's for fan then the fan will start running but the problem is we do not know the indication of the speed so you have to pull it again and again to match the speed wait for 10 to 12 seconds that if that is speed is the thing which you perceive and then uh, like locked to that current state now you know that what it does but the problem is there is no indication to it there is no indication that which chain is for light there is no indication which chain is for fan there is no indication that what speed would be set for fan when you press when you pull it one time or two time or three times and there is no perseverance that if uh, this will work if the uh, if the switch is turned off so it means that the switch should be turned on and you already know that which chain does which job and how many times it needs to be pulled for a certain speed of the fan so you have to perceive all that working and it's not a good interface to 
let the users perceive so much previously for this interface it's good because users perceive exactly what is going on user know that what will happen if i do this so perceptibility refers to the indication that what the user will perceive happens if they perform this activity or if they like use the interface in a way they use it so what will happen in the system so that's the perceptibility now uh, let us hold here and because uh, i what i'm trying to do is i am trying to make the lectures for half an hour or 25 minutes so it will be easier to go through uh, that's why i am being uh, like uh, consistent in the ending of the lectures like we should end here if it is more than 30 minutes or if it is more than 26 minutes so uh, i will uh, I'll, I will assign the captions then this is the part one this is the part two so it will be easier for you to keep the track of that which video to look for the first and which video to look for the second uh, and so on so um, let us end this part here and I will uh, explain the other design heuristics in the next uh, slide or in the next series of videos thank you